Hey, this is Alexander Williamson with The Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. We are at Aquarium Zen here in Seattle, Washington, in North Seattle. Come on in if you're in the area, but we've got these red eye puffers. These are really cool. They're uh, from around Borneo, and they just have, uh, you can just kind of see what they're thinking. They're not terribly expensive or anything, and uh, you know, they're really fun to watch. They're similar to pea puffers. They don't get huge, but they are puffers, so they are still nippy. But I wanted to point out in this video five oddball fish that are great fish to have that are in the store right now that I really like. So we're going to start with those uh, red-eyed puffers. We're going to move on, and we'll, we'll browse a couple other things as we go through. But if you haven't had them before, these blind cave fish... Uh, the cave tetras are also kind of cool. They're just a very uh, interesting quirk of evolution. And, uh, you know, they're just kind of a funky fish. Uh, these ones, uh, as they are blind, haven't stayed away from one of the other fish I love here, which is the gardener eye killi. I think these are uh, P82 gardener eye killies. And they just have incredibly beautiful markings. Uh, you know, Gardner Achilles tend to have very beautiful markings anyhow, but this specific set looks great. So that's awesome to see. Also going on in the back here, we've got Honduran red point cichlids, which is pretty cool, and green tiger barbs, that's also very cool. But what I wanted to point out as maybe a little bit of an oddball or unusual fish that you don't always see in the hobby are these candy cane or uh, albino uh, candy cane tetras. So they're a really pretty fish. They shoal nicely. And as you can see, they're in here uh, peacefully with Corydoras, rummy nose tetras. And rummy nose tetras are one of the best schooling fish in the hobby. Now, the other fish that I wanted to try to find again for you guys was, uh, did I walk right past it, was a, uh, well, we've got, the, there we go, that's what I wanted you guys to see, is the color variation in these puffers. It's really crazy. So they've got that dark black and red tail, but then they also have those stripes. So they're just a really cool fish. You see those red eyes? They are just a beautiful fish. Clearly they're doing okay in a group. And that's always, <clears throat> always fun to check out. So I just always want to highlight those guys. The other fish that I wanted to show off here that you may not have heard of is the uh, Betta Fox, which is a really subtle, it's not overstated, but it's a really subtle, uh, it's a really subtle coloration, and it's just a pretty, kind of graceful little fish, and uh, I just really like these two. Uh, they breed on the daily, basically, and they're just a fun betta to keep if you haven't kept any wild ones. Also, macrostomas are another great wild betta to keep but they're doing a hiding act currently. So now we're gonna head to the other part of the store and we're gonna show off a couple more oddballs that I love, other than the people who work here. No, I'm just kidding. So we've got these zebra autosynclus, sometimes marbled autosynclus. Also sometimes they have the Robocop ones in here, <laughs> which is just the best scientific name ever, is the Robocop fish. Um, so these guys though are really pretty. I've had these in my tanks for a long time. Normal autosynclus or otosynclus are great, but if you have a choice, why not go with these guys? Also over here we have these Danionella. Teeny tiny, they're probably the smallest, probably one of the smallest fish you can get in the hobby, I would guess. They're the second smallest, I'm being told by, by the associate producer here. <laughs> so, they're very interesting. Probably smaller uh, 
in, in stature than a chili rasbor or anything like that, uh, but they are a little bit longer perhaps, or maybe about the same length. So those are kind of a cool fish just to say you have them. You can see they, they do well with shrimp. Obviously day old shrimp, probably any fish could eat, but uh, yeah. So up here, we've got a coral pencil fish. This is a great uh, nano fish if you have kind of a low stock tank. These guys can be a bit nippy, but they just they get brighter as they breed and as their color gets better. You can see they're in here with the pistos, so they get along with these orange cockatoides, uh, orange flash, just fine. And as I'm walking around and showing you some rare fish, I thought that I would also show off uh, some of my favorites uh, that are not so rare, but the ruby tetras are great. They do really well in, in uh, schools. They do well in nano tanks, and they don't put out much waste. They're fun to watch. They move in this kind of twitchy, jerky motion, which is really fun, really fun to watch. So beyond that, the other fish that I really wanted to show you guys, where did it go, is going to be, is it in this tank? Uh, there is a sparkling gourami, which I love these guys. They've got bright little eyes, and uh, they just kind of move all over the place. Uh, and they're very small, they stay very small, and they're just a really fun, little fish so I like those guys a lot too uh, and as we continue on our way the ever awesome uh, checkerboard cichlids those are great great nano fish ember tetras also great nano fish and uh, as we move right along we also have some great fish for tubbing out in the winter We've got albino white cloud minnows and long fin white cloud minnows. So let's get to it. Here is my favorite little nano fish, believe it or not. That is the Somfong Sea Rasbora. They are a beautiful fish, changes colors. They were almost at the, uh, at the end. Everyone thought they were gone in the 70s. But in 2006, they showed up in a shipment of German uh, Harlequin Rasboras, and they've been brought back from three specimens known in the world to this. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I really like that. Uh, then we've also got some Killies up here, these gold Australia Killies. They are just beautiful. Now you probably want to do these in a tank on their own to really get the full potential of them. Maybe put a pair or a trio in a tank. You could put quarries or something in there, uh, but they're actually one of the, uh, they're one of the, definitely one of the fish in the killifish world that will utilize the bottom water quite a bit, which is really useful. So. That's kind of a list of some of my favorite uh, nano fish that are in the store right now. I also love these Tin Winnie Gold Ring, as they're also known, Danios. They're easy to breed if you're getting into egg scattering species. Easy to breed, beautiful, and uh, they actually get this kind of purple sheen on their fins as they get older. Sometimes it's mahogany, sometimes it's a purple, and they're a very cool fish. I lied. So the very last fish I'm going to show you is the brown-tailed pencil fish. These guys look out of this world and they're just a fun, fun fish to check out. They uh, do well in a busy tank. You can put, you know, reed tetras or silver tip tetras with them. I'm just trying to get a good shot of one. Uh, and there we are, right up there. These are brown-tailed pencil fish. And they kind of stay at this angle. Oops, there's a dead one, that's sad. They just came in the other night. 
So right there you can see they get red rather than brown also, which is fun. So I hope you guys enjoy checking out some of these fish. Uh, and I hope you guys check out Aquarium Zen if you come into town sometime and you're in Seattle. Thanks, guys. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe as well as comment about what you'd like to see next time I'm here. Is it this Oscar who is the most personal, personable Oscar in the world? Is it him? Or is it something else? He plays a game where the, the objective of the game is for him to jump up and nip before I get him. It's called Booth the Snoot and Danielle, Danny taught him. So just a beautiful fish, wild caught, definitely not a nano tank fish. He would wipe out your nano tank in an afternoon, but he is a baby and he is adorable and very intelligent. So we'll end with his sweet little face saying goodbye to you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my Patreon if you want to support my travels and the channel. Thanks, guys.